Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. This video is gonna be about the Mavic 4 Pro and the full tech spec. You guys know how, how I am when it comes to doing uh, the tech spec reviews of drones, super in-depth. So let me start here with the first one, and I also have the PDF available too, which is from uh, DJI. And this is the full tech spec uh, guide. Um, and information for the Mavic 4 Pro. So to start off, the max ascend speed is like crazy fast now. So it's 10 meters a second, which is 22 miles per hour that it can extend in um, sport mode. And then six meters a second in normal mode and in sin mode. The max takeoff altitude is 6,000 meters. With the Mavic 4 Pro propeller guards though, it's limited to 3,000 meters. Max flight time is 51 by DJI and what they tested. This will be from a full charge, 100% to 0%. So realistically, you'll get about 43 minutes on this drone when charging up to 100 and maybe down to like 10 and some reports down to 8%. The max hovering time alone on the drone is 45 minutes. So if you're actually going a de decent speed, you'll get more flight time out of this drone in comparison to just hovering it. The max pitch angle of the drone, so the, the angle that the drone can fly uh, either forward or backwards or sideways, left or right is 45 degrees. The operating temperature is all the way down to minus 10 Celsius and to 40 Celsius. So to put that in Fahrenheit, it's uh, 14 Fahrenheit to uh, 104. The, the internal storage on the Mavic 4 Pro is 64 gigs, which 44 about is how much is usable on the internal storage. So if you forget your micro SD card, don't worry because you have plenty of storage on the internal to also record as well. The micro SD card slot allows up to one terabyte and Unfortunately, it does not allow for a UHS uh, Mark II. They still do the UHS Mark I, which uh, limits the amount of uh, megabits per second of transfer speed for the video. If DJI is watching this, update that with your latest drones. That would be like much appreciated. The Hasselblad camera. So let's get into the camera specs now. So the Hasselblad camera is a four thirds sensor size. So bigger than your one inch sensor that you would find on some of these drones now. It allows up to 100 megapixels. So the actual sensor size of this camera is 25 megapixels, but it uses what's called a quad Bayer sensor where it splits one sensor um, into four. It doesn't use any type of AI upscaling. It is truly from the sensor, so that's nice to know. It does show an up in quality too. So I'll show you some um, examples here with the normal one, this is a 25 megapixel, and then this one right here is a 100 megapixel. And the medium tele camera uses a 1.3 of an inch sensor. So that one still is the same uh, as the Mavic 3 Pro. The effective pixels for taking photos has been increased to 48 megapixels. The really cool thing about this drone is it also allows for D-Log, M and D-Log, across all of the cameras as well. The tele camera has had an up in the sensor. It's a 1.5 of an inch sensor. And the effective pixels on this is surprisingly 50 megapixels. So all three of these cameras use the same technology of that quad Bayer technology to up its resolution. Another really great thing about the lens on the main camera is it's a 28 millimeter lens. They introduced this lens, the 28 millimeter, when the Mavic 2 Pro came out. The Mavic 3 came out, then they downed it to 24, which is a wider uh, millimeters. The aperture on this has been upped as well. So it's a f2.0 and down to f11. So that extra f2.0 uh, will give you more light entering into your camera. It does say though, as a note, that you'll get full quality and probably the most sharpness out of the f2.8 still. That is an option. You can go all the way down to f2.0. The focus range on the main camera is two meters. So it's about six feet. So if you're within six feet of that main camera, it's not going to quite focused on you. And then it focuses all the way out to um, uh, infinity, as it says. The medium tele camera and the the uh, tele camera, those both have a focus length of three meters. So there you have nine feet of focus. So if you're within nine feet of the lens, it'll focus in. But if you're within the three meters uh, or the nine feet, then it won't focus on you. This is not 
too much to worry about because if you're flying, you're obviously going to be way farther than nine feet away, uh, whatever you're recording and with those cameras. So let's talk about the ISO range. So in normal mode, it goes from 100 to 12,800 ISO, and that's in normal mode. And D-Log, D-Log M and HLG goes from 100 to 6,400. But do note for the D-Log, it starts at 400 as the base ISO and then up to 6,400. If you're doing slow motion, so if you're capturing in the 4K 100 FPS or 4K 120 FPS, the ISL does get limited when you're shooting in D-Log and D-Log M and HLG as well as normal. So in all modes they get limited. In normal it goes down to 6,400 ISO. D-Log goes to 3,200. D-Log M and HLG are also 3,200 as the max. So those were for video modes. For the photo mode it's 100 to 6,400 with the 25 megapixels. But using that quad bayer sensor that ups it to 100, then it goes from 100 to only 3,200. And this goes for all three cameras as well. Okay, so this is a big upgrade. The Hasselblad main camera can shoot in the photo mode 16 thousandths of a second. So usually most of these drones shoot to 8 thousandths of a second. Of course, it's an electronic shutter. Uh, but this new one does 16,000 of the shutter. The other drones also shoot in this um, in their regular megapixel count. So with the 25 megapixel on the main camera, the 12 on the medium tele, and the 12.5 on the tele camera. But then if you're going to use that quad bayer sensor and use the 50 megapixel, 100 megapixel, and 48 megapixel, then it's going to be limited to the 8,000th of a shutter. This is honestly a really fast shutter speed. Many people don't go surpass this, but it is cool that they um, upgraded that part too. So the still photography modes is 25 megapixel, 100 megapixel. It does AEB in three, five, or seven photos. That changes the EV levels. If you'd like to learn more about that, I'll have a full tutorial teaching about that and how to actually use your Mavic 4 Pro as well. The burst shooting, you can do three, five, and seven um, times in a second. And then with the 100 megapixel, it's gonna be three and five frames. The photo formats is JPEG and DNG, which is the raw format. Now let's get into the video of the Mavic 4 Pro. So it shoots in H.265 and H.264 with H.265 being the main standard, you're going to get um, better quality out of your video and the file size is going to be smaller. So it does 6K at 60 FPS, 50 FPS, 48, 30, 25, and 24. So if you have different varieties of the frames per second that you want to be shooting in. It also does true 4K up to 120 frames per second, 60, 50, 48, 30, 25, and 24. And then as far as 4K, the same um, frames per second. The medium tele camera allows you to shoot in the same frame rates. Um, it starts at 4K up to 120 frames per second and down to 24 frames per second. The H.264 all I format in the 422 codec is only for the creator combo drone. So if you get the regular one or the fly more kit, you won't get those capabilities of the 422 codec and the all I um, codec or the H.264 all I codec. You won't get those with the regular ones, only the creator combo. The creator combo also comes with 512 gigabytes of storage as well, internal storage. So those are the three upgrades with the creator combo as well with the RC2 Pro. Uh, controller. So let's talk about video bitrate. So for shooting in H.264, the bitrate is only going to be 90 megabits, which is not so great. So that's why you want to shoot H.265 with your bitrate being up to 180. When I was shooting 6K in 24 frames per second, I was seeing about 150, but my next test is going to be with the 6k at 60 fps it might be 180 or close to that and then shooting h.264 all i with the creator combo drone that one's going to have a bit rate of 1200 uh, megabits per second so 
crazy amount of information being sent to that storage. The supported file system is XFAT, so EXFAT. So it shoots 10-bit and 8-bit. The creator combo is 422 color codec, and then that does 8-bit at 42, and that is across all cameras as well. This drone also allows you to zoom in, a digital zoom. So while you're zooming in from the main camera, and then it goes to the medium tele, and then the regular tele all the way in. And then you can even go from the tele camera, which is six times, all the way into 24 times digital zoom. The gimbal is a three axis um, mechanical gimbal. The roll on the gimbal can go 90 and 450. So it can do a full rotation. It's not infinite. The roll is not infinite. The tilt is full 90 down and then it can go 70 up. So that's a, a huge benefit uh, compared to the Mavic 3 and previous Mavic series. This one does have a vertical and then it also has the 70 degrees up on the camera, which is super beneficial seeing upwards. You can look at bridge from underneath. You can look at trees in a whole different perspective. So that's really cool. So it has omnidirectional sensors on here as well. So what these sensors is creating a map. So like the Atuo 2, that one had uh, this map making while it was flying. And now the DJI has this. So not only when you're regular flying, but when you return to home, it will make a map and it already has made a map of when you're flying. So then it knows how to come back without crashing into things. On the Mavic 4 Pro, you have LiDAR sensors as well on the front. And I believe on the bottom too, I've seen a little bit of flickering. Can't confirm that quite yet, but I know on the uh, one of the arms, it does have the LiDAR. So the new OcuSync 4 Plus is a new operating frequency. So it supports the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5.8 gigahertz band, as well as the 5.1 gigahertz. Let's see, so the battery. The battery capacity is 6,654 milliamp with a nominal voltage of 14.3 and max charge of 17.2. So I'm seeing that they kind of went down on the, um, what's called a HV battery, which would usually charge up to 4.35 a volt. Now I'm seeing a max charge of 4.25 with this battery. And I think the reason for that is because these normal LiPo 4 batteries are a little bit lighter now, and they're able to pack in more of that watt hours. So then the flight time is more extended. Uh, the total capacity is 95 watt hours. So 99 is the max you can bring on flight. So you can still bring this drone and extra batteries on a plane. And just check to see how many individual uh, batteries that you can bring on the airport. Cause certain planes only allow a certain amount of batteries, even though it has a certain max watt hour. So something else to look into. So the power brick that comes with the crater combo is 240 watts. And then the power brick that comes with the regular models and the fly more models is hundred watts. So this will charge your battery in about an hour. And then I will list all the voltages for the power brick and the drone and what voltages the drone can intake as well. It can intake most of the PD chargers. There is a 45 watt charger that I will mention in the description. This will be affiliate links and all the links in this video are affiliate links. So this helps uh, me make more videos for you guys. And um, it helps support the channel as well if you buy through these links. And this 45 watt charger will charge it at half the speed, but preserving your longevity of the battery. So actually charging your battery slower is better on your battery. So if at all possible, it's always best to charge at a slower speed. If you're in a rush, then you can use the normal charger and charge it quicker. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope that helped. Uh, the sun's going down here, so i got to wrap this up. So yeah, please subscribe and like the video if you have. And see you guys in the next one. So the next video I'm going to have as a paid course teaching you literally everything you need to know about the Mavic 4 Pro and how to use it in a professional way how to color grade, how to shoot in a professional color format, how to get the max uh, dynamic range out of this drone, how to shoot normal photos, how to edit the photos, how to shoot an AEB, how to edit these for real estate, anything with even higher dynamic range, creating HDR photos, 
and so much more in this course, specifically for people that have the Mavic 4 Pro. And I'm also going to introduce the Mini um, 4 as well. So the Mini 4 Pro will be included as well in that course.